Good afternoon and welcome to the Gateway Live Update. We're glad you're along today. Gateway Live Update is a 15-minute short Bible study devotion and prayer during COVID-19. Uh, we've been on the air almost every single day since the beginning of March and we continue to do this till we see it out. We pray against this virus that God will destroy it. And we welcome you to our Tuesday edition of the Gateway Live Update. Today is a beautiful day in South Jersey. Uh, low 70s, low humidity, light breeze, sunny, few clouds in the sky. It's just a great day, great day to be here in southern New Jersey. I told you we get a couple good weeks of weather a year in the spring and the fall, and this is one of them. And we had it pretty easy summer, even though it was hot. So we started yesterday, First Peter. As we're going through the book of First Peter, we finished Mark on Thursday. We did a special teaching on Friday. And then yesterday we began First Peter. Told you again to remind you, Peter is who Mark used as a source. Mark hung around, John Mark, with Peter the Apostle. And so we're in his first letter. We got just two last uh, webcasts. We just got to the end of verse 3, which I'll pick up and read again and continue. That says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And what a marvelous thing to have and it's good to be with you to miss teddy and we're in verse four so this living hope this resurrection out from among the dead that we all have by being born again it's a given free gift nothing you have to pay for or earn it's something that god gives you two verse four an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, and kept in heaven for you. Your salvation is kept for you by God. It's not something, thank the Lord, that you can mess up or that I can mess up because it's given by God. Now, I know a lot of religious groups out there make it seem like you got to earn something to get there. Jesus paid it all. It's all paid for. And we have that in heaven. Jesus said when he was on earth, Jesus said that anyone who believes on me, as the scripture has said, has already crossed over from death to life. We're already in the life. You see, the life started then when you were born again. It didn't start when you die or when you get to a certain uh, level of Christianity or spirituality. It doesn't work like that. It's what Jesus did that paid it for you and for I. And we thank him for his finished work on the cross that redeemed us, that purchases us to God through his blood. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. And we thank him that we have this inheritance that's imperishable. It doesn't perish. Now, some things you buy and you think they're imperishable, but they deteriorate and they just aren't here anymore. Think about those valuable things you had 50 years ago and where they're at now, or even 20 years ago, but you highly cherished and it's not there. Just like when you buy food, you buy food nowadays, you buy it. First of all, the coupon perishes in, in a week or so. You say after that, we go get it. And then you put it in your refrigerator. And then before you know it, the date's over and you end up throwing it out. What a waste. Food perishes. Things perish. But your inheritance that's in heaven does not perish. Undefiled. It stays perfect and unfading. It doesn't get messed up and it doesn't fade away. But it's kept in heaven for you. Who? Verse 5. You guys being born again. Who? 
by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be reveal, revealed in the last time. This salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time now. Right now, when Jesus comes back, it's ready to be revealed. See, we don't, it's not revealed yet. You don't get, I'm sorry, Joel, you don't get your best life now. But the salvation is ready to be revealed in the last time. All the things people are making fun of you, you Christians, blah, blah, blah. That salvation is ready to be revealed. Ready. And last time. Last there is the word eschatos, where you get the word eschatology from, the study of last things. It's the word for last in Greek. And it's ready to be revealed. Amen? Ready to be revealed in the last time. I, I think that's awesome. Who kept by God's power are being guarded through faith. God is the one who maintains your salvation. If he left it up to me, I'd mess it up. That's why, you know, in our bodies, you know, we have voluntary things. I can move my hand here. I can do this. I can smack myself in the face. But heartbeat and breathing, God did not put that into my ability. God does that. Because I would forget to breathe. I would forget to beat my heart. So it does it by itself. It's kept by God. And the same thing's true about my salvation in heaven, it's kept by God because I would do something foolish. I would do something stupid. So God knew, God knows human beings. He knows that we're weak. He knows that we mess things up. He knows sometimes we're dopes. He does, come on, admit it. I mean, not all of us are as good as you are, but we mess up, we do stupid things. And so that imperishable, undefiled, unfading salvation kept in heaven is preserved by God's power because we're being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed. God guards you. He guards your heart. He guards your mind. He guards you. Isn't that great? God does that. It's God. Hey, how could he get any better than God, right? It's God. God does it. What a great God that we serve. Amen? A great God. A really good God. In this you rejoice. We're in verse 6. In this you rejoice. You do. I do. Uh, I rejoice that God has kept it for me and that God preserves me. I really do. I do all the time. Like I said, I would do something foolish. But God's the one who preserves me. So I rejoice. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. Hey, really, I do rejoice, but look, times now I get grieved by different things that happen. How many of you do? How many of you get grieved by things that happen in your life? It didn't go the way you wanted. It didn't turn out the way you thought. They didn't do the right thing. You thought that they would be more mature by now. And, all these things. We get grieved by various stress or things that come about. Coronavirus. Coronavirus, the reason we're here right now, is a grieving. We grieve that this is going on in our world. And, and I grieve that the church doesn't repent, yet alone the world turned to God because of it. Instead, they thumb their noses and they yell at him and they tell him, what's up? I was watching, someone had on the TV on YouTube, as it was, uh, a couple of weeks ago, an old American bandstand episode from the 1960s. I think it was 1968. And you saw Dick Clark, the host, interviewing all the people with his microphone, all the kids. And they were so respectful. And, and I think about the kids of nowadays of 16, 17, 18, compared to the kids 16, 17, 18 in Philadelphia or Los Angeles, wherever he was interviewing them, and how nice they were, how polite and manner they were, and how mature they were. The world's a lot nastier now. And again, I'm being tried by trials when I see that. It bothers me. It does. I wish it didn't. 
but people are just nasty. Adults are nasty. When I hear the horrible things people say on social media, horrible, beating people down, hurting them and hurting their feelings, not caring about the person. I know it bothers the Lord too, but he allows you and he allows me to go through these trials of many kinds. James said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into trials of many kinds. We do. They happen. And that's a word too. We fall into them. We just fall into those different trials of all different kinds. But God allows it. But listen, he preserves you through it. That's what to get excited about. Remember anything today. Remember God preserves you through the trials. Something to rejoice and something to be excited about and something to be happy about. Amen? Amen. And I hope you really let that click because the God that we serve, he don't just provide salvation through his son, but he preserves us in our life and he has salvation waiting for us. You know, it's I grew up, I thought like maybe if you're good enough, you make it and you earn. No. It's something that we receive by faith, and God has it waiting for me. God has it waiting for you. Not something I did. Not something I earned. Not something I attained. It's something that the Lord attained for me, and he preserves me through. That's a great thing, man. That's really awesome. And I hope you'll let that sink in. Let that sink into your head. It's so hard for people to understand that. Because they want to be responsible for their own when God is the one saying, listen, I'm going to keep it for you undefiled and perfect. And I'm going to guide you through. And he does. Amen. We thank him for that. We're going to pick up there tomorrow. So be sure to be here. Right now we're going to pray. Don't forget, we pray right now. And we pray again at 9 p.m. The reason we pray at 9 p.m. is primarily and firstly for God to destroy, wipe out, heal from this COVID-19. And we do it now and we do it again at 9. Please join us, whatever you're doing. Right now, take your phone. Set the alarm on your phone. It's so simple. Look, you set the alarm here. You set it for, say... Now you could set it for 9 p.m. My mine for 8:55, and that's going to ring because whatever I'm doing, the enemy and everything else, the world's going to distract me. But whatever I'm doing, I remember 9:55. Now we also, if you want to sign up, we have a free prayer list, a text list that'll come to you with prayer requests, and a reminder every night between five of to three of, we'll get a, a message saying that it's almost time. And it reminds us to direct our thoughts to pray. Please join us in that. Join, you're going to join us right now. Don't tune out. Stay tuned as we pray. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, that you do preserve us. But, Lord, we again, we ask you, Lord, that you would heal us from this COVID-19. That you would heal not just us in our area, Lord, but the whole earth of this plague. Lord, as we humble ourselves, turn to you and pray, and seek your face and turn from our wicked ways, Lord, we ask you to heal our land. Please, Lord. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your care, Lord. Lift up all those who are sick, hurting and afflicted right now, Lord, that you would help them. Help them, Lord, with the words that we shared today. Help them with your word. Let us all love you more as we try and strive to serve you, Lord, our great God, the one who loves us and never gives up on us, and the one who preserves us. Thank you, Lord. We pray this and all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us again today. I want to encourage you to uh, be praying. Hey, listen, you don't have to wait till nine o'clock to pray again. You can pray whenever you want. Pray with whoever you are. Agree with somebody. Pray. Don't forget.
We'll be back tomorrow at noon. Don't forget, tomorrow evening, 7.30, we're in Matthew, beginning chapter 5 in the Beatitudes, the Sermon on the Mount. Great passage, good stuff, good things to get into, meditate, and learn. Amen. So we'll see you then tomorrow night, and we'll see you tomorrow at noon. And until we greet you on the morrow, may God's richest and blessed be yours. Bye.